ஷேரிங் ஆப்ஷன் ஒன்றும் எனேபிள் பண்ணல மேம் we have now dr jeba uh we have yes, around uh, seven eight more minutes right yes sir yes uh, waiting for director uh, to join okay sir we have time sir i'll call okay. him yeah our our guest uh, have shown a uh, british punctuality it's a great precedence actually am i audible and i'm not able to hear you ma'am can you hear me ma'am i can hear you ma'am uh 
I'm not able to hear. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Ma'am, your voice is audible, ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear us, ma'am? Okay, now please take the I'm hearing you, Dr. Jabba. Lada, ma'am? Yes, now I'm hearing. Yes, yes, yes. Good yes. Done. 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 Good morning, sir. I think uh, I saw maybe facing some problem, not you. Good morning, we are sir. We're not hearing you, sir. Dr. Jeba, I think you need to fix the problem with uh, your director. We are not hearing. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, a bit louder. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Done. Thanks, All sir. right. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Mr. Ganesh. Very good morning, sir. How have you been? Good, doing well, sir. Thank you so much. Great. So we all look forward to your speech to us, and we hope to overcome all our emotional stress today. Sure, that's the intention, sir. That's right. Thank you. Shall we start, sir? Sir? Yes, Dr. Jema. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yes, ma'am. Good morning to everyone present here. I hope all are safe and healthy and thank each and every one of you for attending this session amidst the pandemic. Before we start the event, let's raise for the invocation song followed by Shri Harantam.
I welcome you all to this webinar on emotional re-engineering organized by the Sri Ramachandra Faculty of Management Sciences, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research. The COVID-19 pandemic brought the world to its knees and people worldwide are battling it through thick and thin. This global pandemic has not only affected our daily lives, but also our mental health. Amidst the daily news on the increasing cases and maintaining safety norms, it sure is challenging to balance our lives and focus on our mental well-being. Well, to help us all get through these difficult times, we have a very special guest today to help us bring awareness on our emotions, actions, and intentions. First, let me call upon our Vice Principal, Dr. Selvam Zaseya, sir, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Ruchita, uh, respected director, distinguished uh, speaker of this webinar, Mr. Ganesh, our uh, special guest, Dr. Nadar Vichandran, colleagues and the audience of this webinar. While teaching marketing management, we deal with a concept called the emotional integrator in order to connect uh, well with uh, customers, connecting customers with the service providers. The objective of applying the emotional engineering is to ensure emotional customer service, thereby the customer will start loving you as service providers. It is not that once you engineer emotions suiting to customers you lost forever. You need to re-re-re-re-engineer continuously and tirelessly as the behavior of customers keeps on changing. Today's seminar is very contextual and need of this hour of pandemic as we require certain techniques and tips to balance our emotions, actions, and intentions. Therefore, emotional damage at this juncture may be avoided or lessened. <clears throat> we have Mr. Ganesh Kumar, who is an emotional alchemist and an eminent trainer in the Neuro Linguistic Programming, is also a founder EQ Universe Learning Solutions Limited. It is a pleasure to welcome you, Mr. Ganesh. When we posted this program on our official group, um, our dean of faculties applauded, saying it sounds different. And so did we. Our audience is very eager to hear you, Mr. Ganesh. And it is our pleasure to welcome Dr. Lada Ravichandran, Associate Dean Education, who is a catalyst in our university as for the quality assurance and enhancement of the curriculum, which always stand out, stand out in India. Dr. Lada called me this morning to fine tune her thoughts on this program, demonstrating the attitude for greater learning. That is also quality of greater leadership. It is nothing but she re-engineered herself. Ma'am, it is our pleasure to have you with this morning for this webinar. I'm extremely happy to welcome our director, Professor Casey John, who will share introductory remarks and most importantly, our audience, students, academic friends and colleagues for this webinar. I'm, I'm taking great pleasure in welcoming each and every one. 
our profound thanks to uh, honorable chancellor co chancellor vice chancellor and dean of faculties for their in continuous encouragement and support our appreciation to dr jabratna for organizing this great event wish you all great event thank you so much may god bless you thank you sir may i now request dr lata ravi chandran ma'am associate dean of education to deliver the inaugural address thank you very much at the outset uh, it's my immense pleasure to be participating in today's program i would say like i'm also a part of this learning process and you know always there is always i have the reason to be committing my time to this particular session one i am a pediatrician basically so what is that kind of pediatrician i am an adolescent pediatrician so number one i'm really concerned about the storm that normally happens and the challenge is much more the second i deal with students of this university that is the second i wouldn't call it as a geopedy is an added responsibility in addition to dealing with the teens so the teens who are students who are in their career normally itself it's a phase where they go through a lot of emotions and lot of thoughts now there is a challenge and third is as a clinician the covid which stands as a big challenge to the whole global community as such so there is three or say triple geopedy over here. so that's the reason i thought i should listen and equip myself to a little bit more on this because it's not possible to do it all alone we need to be together on this respected director of sri ramachandra faculty of uh, management sciences vice principal professor selvam the guest speaker for today this webinar mr ganesh kumar the faculty members of the uh, management uh, faculty of management and my dear friends once again i'm here to say i'm very happy to participate in this seminar today unesco has said education of nearly 1.6 billion people of 190 countries has so far been affected because of this pandemic when i was in this age group that time the sri lanka silon war used to be the main reason why we wouldn't go to school for two weeks or three weeks and it used to create so much of happiness because we don't need to go to school that's how the pandemic started but over one and a half years it doesn't seem to be over as yet so now slowly everybody especially the students who are now into a mode where they are learning from home are now starting to think their thought process is much more you know faster the people who wanted to be only in the virtual world found themselves solace to run away with their mobile phones and others are now actually thinking what is it that is happening so that something is an emotion that we all have to really handle so what is an emotion and how does it affect it is how a particular person deal with a situation or a matter that is very personal to them it is not about what's happening nobody has control of what's happening but how you react to those situations is more important so is emotion wrong no not at all you have positive emotions you have negative emotions feel it go through it but how you respond to it is most important and this is a situation where we can't do it alone you need help you need help even to even learn cooking you need the help of your mother or your grandmother to come and tell you how to do it so that's where i am very happy the uh, faculty of uh, management sciences has organized this and given priority because the students emotion are very vital to us and we are there to support you during this phase just a last few words in this i would like to say is one when we are handling all of this how to make it positive i know positivity has been one of what we call it as post covid syndrome too much of positivity also going but the most important is an opportunity for us adults i wouldn't call it adults somebody who has had a little bit more experience than the rest of you in the path that we have taken because of our age is to model problem solving flexibility and compassion as we adjust to the new norms or 
what are daily routine that has been changed and balance work and enhance the creativity creativity is something which i would say in scientific terms also causes dopamine surge dopamine gives you the good feel so when you are enhancing your creativity this is an opportunity and now there is an opportunity for processing new information and also to connect and most important is to how what role you play to support your family members so with this a uh, few words i really uh, want to say uh, uh, give my best wishes for this program to be a great success and i'm thankful to the speaker and of course the director as well as the vice principal of the management sciences for organizing such a program at shrigar for us anything that we do has to have a mark and also reach the global visibility thank you very much for this opportunity thank you ma'am uh, it would be amazing to hear introductory remarks from our director dr k c john sir over to you sir thank you roshna dr lata ravi chandran associate dean mr ganesh kumar our expert resource person for the day dr selvam dr jabarathnam ladies and gentlemen last 18 to 20 months have helped us to realize that health crisis could impact our daily lives our daily livelihood and it cuts across the boundaries of nation and disrupts the societal context globally and so what we are getting ready is frequently recurring societal disruptions today it's a health crisis tomorrow it could be a climate crisis day after tomorrow it could be a water crisis so it's it's very important that all of us look at societal disruptions as a part of our life we also recognize that past data is not a good predictor of what will happen today and what will happen tomorrow and that's where our endeavor in the faculty of management sciences is to prepare leaders leaders who could fathom the uncertainty and look for living for the day living for the moment so what distinguishes great leaders from merely good ones it's not iq or technical skills it's emotional intelligence i vividly recall my first impressions of reading daniel goleman in 1996 his book was emotional intelligence why it can matter more than iq Daniel postulated that it's emotional intelligence a group of five skills that enable the best leaders to maximize their own and their followers performance intelligent emotional intelligence skills are in terms of the five elements number 1 self awareness knowing one's strengths weaknesses drives values and impact on others number 2 is self regulation controlling or redirecting disruptive impulses and moods number 3 is motivation how do we relish achievements for its own sake number 4 is empathy understanding other people's emotional makeup and ability to walk in others shoe and number 5 is social skill building rapport with others to move them in desired direction all of us are born with certain levels of emotional intelligence skills but we can strengthen these abilities through persistence practice and feedback from colleagues or coaches and today mr ganesh would help us how to reengineer our emotional well-being even though most of us believe that we are self aware it's a truly rare quality 
social psychologists estimate that only 10 to 15 percent of people actually understand and fit the criteria of being self-aware. Through my long journey of leadership, entrepreneurship, and change agent, I found that three factors can help us develop practical guidance to see ourselves more clearly. Let me enunciate these factors. Number one, there are two types of self-awareness. First is internal self-awareness. How clearly we see our own values, passions, aspirations, goodness of fit with our environment, reactions, and impact on others. Internal self-awareness is associated with higher job and relationship satisfaction, personal and social control, and happiness. It's negatively related to anxiety, stress, and depression, which is in great abundance during this pandemic. The second one is external self-awareness, understanding how other people view us in terms of those same factors that I enumerated earlier. People who know how others see them are more skilled at showing empathy and taking others' perspective. For leaders who see themselves as their staff do, tend to have a better relationship with them, feel more satisfied with them, and see them as more effective in general. I had attended Center for Creative Leadership in USA, uh, the program which, when I was working for Qualcomm, Qualcomm has asked all its leaders to attend and see how it could own the leadership and emotional intelligence quality. It actively works, the Center for Creative Leadership works with leaders on both seeing themselves clearly and getting 360 degree feedback to understand how others see themselves. Highly self-aware people are actively focused on balancing the scale. CCL, the Center for Creative Leadership, created a two-by-two two matrix for me as well as for all other leaders at Qualcomm to see how each one of us could establish congruence between our respective internal and external self-awareness. The bottom line is that self-awareness is not one truth. It's a delicate balance of two distinct and even competing viewpoints. The second point which I wanted to highlight is experience and power hinder self-awareness. By virtue of their level, senior leaders simply have fewer people above them who can provide candid feedback. The more power a leader wields, the less comfortable people will be to give them constructive feedback for fear it will hurt their careers. As one's power grows, one's willingness to listen shrinks, either because they think they know more than their staff or because seeking feedback will come at a cost. However, I have found that successful leaders seek frequent critical feedback from bosses, peers, staff, their board, and so on. They become more self-aware in the process and come to be seen as more effective by others. Number three, introspection does not always improve self-awareness. The problem with introspection is not that it is categorically ineffective, it's the most people are doing it incorrectly. The most common introspective question that we ask when trying to understand our emotions is why? Why do I like staff A so much more than staff B? Or our behavior, why did I fly off the handle with staff C? Or our attitudes, why am I so against this way of working here? As it turns out, why is a surprisingly ineffective self-awareness question. Why we do not have access to many of the 
unconscious thoughts, feelings, and motives we are searching for. And because so much is trapped outside of our conscious awareness, we tend to invent answers that feel true, but are often wrong. The problem with asking why is not just how wrong we are, but how confident we are that we are right. The human mind rarely operates in a rational fashion, and our judgments are seldom free from bias. We rarely question the validity of insights. We tend to ignore contradictory evidence, and we force our thoughts to conform our initial explanation. To increase productive self-insight and decrease unproductive rumination, I have found that asking what and not why is useful. What questions help us stay objective, future-oriented, and empowered to act on our new insight. Instead of asking, why do I feel terrible? I ask, what are the situations that make me feel terrible? And what do uh, they have in common? As a founder of series of entrepreneurial venture and leader, I focus on building both internal and external self-awareness. I seek honest feedback from loving critiques, and I ask what instead of why. These help me to see and learn, looking at myself more clearly and reap the many rewards that increased self-knowledge delivers. And no matter how much progress we make, there is always more to learn. That's one of the things that makes the journey of self-awareness so exciting. I look forward to learning from Mr. Ganesh how we can use NLP to re-engineer our emotions during this testing time. Thank you very much and welcome Mr. Ganesh. Thank you, sir. Now I request our assistant professor, Dr. G. Jabbaratinama, to introduce the speaker of this webinar. It's my honor to introduce the speaker of this webinar, Mr. Kumar S. Mr. Ganesh is an emotional alchemist, emotional intelligence trainer and coach, author of the book, The Power of Emotions, founder of EQ Universe Learning Solution Private Limited, and also the founder of Emotional Reengineering Model. He conducted two workshops in emotional intelligence, trained more than 10,000 plus people in the topic of emotion. He has done his Master of Business Administration from Madison Institute of Management, Digital in Marketing and Human Resources. He has authored the book, The Power of Emotion, a proven post-step model to gain true happiness in your professional relationship. An international Amazon bestseller in six categories, one of the categories being happiness, sold more than five less for still. He specializes in emotional intelligence, and has founded a company which exclusively trains and coaches people on emotion, EQ Universe Learning Solutions. He has conducted emotional intelligence workshops across India, corporate across different issues, across designation from entry level to director. He is a neuro linguistic programming practitioner certified by American Board of NLP. NLP Master Practice Certified by the National Federation of NLP, Life Coach Certified by the International Coach Federation, Emotional Intelligence Coach Certified by International Coaching Federation, Transaction Analysis 101 Certified by the International Transaction Analysis Association, International Train the Trainer completed from Blair Singer and has completed Master Diploma in Training Certified by the Indian Academy of Training and Development. He has a decade of experience in sales and Trinity. He has worked in Citibank for, for about six years. He has also worked in ICIC Bank in upcountry Karnataka as sales manager, handling their credit cards and merchant investment. 
some of the colleges uh, and uh, companies he has trained so far are Tata Consultancy Services, Accenture, Amazon, Rampo System, LA Infotech, BI Worldwide, NRS, Tax Software India Limited, Citibank, ICICI Lombard, Canada Bank, Life Insurance Corp, Rampo Cement, Hyundai Motors Limited, Confederation India Industries, Indian Textile Federation, Madras Ma Management Association, Hindustan University, Satyabama University, Pondicherry University, Ramchandra University, Amiji Global Business School, Etraj College for Women, Madras School of Social Work, Onan Institute of Higher Education and Technology, Loyola College, and list goes on. We are happy to have you as a resource person for this webinar, sir. Over to you, Ganesh, sir. Thank you so much uh, for the time and thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Director Casey John and uh, Dr. Lata Lavich and then uh, Dr. Selvam, sir, and uh, Dr. Jabati Ramam for inviting me for an, and having me over here. Um, and it's a great opportunity to share whatever that I have gone through and experiences and whatever training that I've done with all of you. Uh, we have close to about, I think, 290 plus uh, students waiting for us to listen, and I'm really eager to take you forward. Just let's do a quick check. Uh, can you all go ahead and type hi in the chat box, all the students who are waiting out there? Uh, we have a beautiful way of interacting and connecting with each other. Can you go ahead and type hi in the chat box and let us know that you are there and so that we can also connect with you and participate. There are two options, as you are aware. The one is the chat box yeah, where your questions are there. I would ask you to use the chat, not the question. The questions, we will use it only for asking questions so that it's easier for me to uh, go and use that option. Nobin, Sharat, Kiana, Parthi, all of you use the chat box and answer us. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Great. Selvam says use the chat box and we can see that and others can also do that. Wonderful. Okay. Maybe. Great, thank you so much for all of you being here and uh, being part of this particular session. I'm gonna be taking you for the next one and a half hours uh, till about 12.30 in talking about emotional re-engineering. 90 minutes is a great time for us to understand and get a peak view of understanding how to handle our emotions. We heard Casey Johnson talking a lot about awareness and how we can build a lot of awareness. In this particular session, that's the core uh, essence here. I'm going to be talking about how do you build your awareness so that it's easy for you to handle yourself in a very, very powerful way. Right? So I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions throughout this entire session. Feel free to uh, use the chat box where I ask you to go ahead and type something. I, I want you to feel um, uh, easy to do that, right? And always keep the chat box going like the way all of you have done that. Uh, continuously, almost about 20, 30, 40 of you have uh, used the chat box. All of you, I want you to uh, do that. There's a slight disturbance in the mic. Let me check that. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and then share the PPT also for you guys so that it's easy for you to connect with me. Just a second. I've switched on my PPT. Hope it is visible for you. Can you also let me know in the chat box if you're able to see my PPT, go ahead and type it and let me know if you are able to see my PPT. Go ahead and type it in the chat box and let me know if you can see. Yes, ma'am. So emotional re-engineering, um, I firmly believe just by mastering our emotions, it's very, very possible for us to master our life. The journey of handling our emotions comes with a lot of ways. And the most powerful way to understand emotional intelligence and make it part of a life is to bring a lot of awareness, right? So let me ask you the first question. I want all of you to just be there and interact with me. What is one thing that travels with you right from birth and all the way until death? Can you type in the chat box and let me know what is one thing that travels with you right from the time you are born and all the way till death? There are many things that it travels with us, right? Sometimes it's... Uh, our thoughts, wonderful. Our emotions, very good. Ranjit right away hits the point. Can I request all of you? Gana, thank you so much for saying that. What is one thing that travels with us? Our mind and soul, wonderful. Feelings, very good. Our personality, says Amudan, very nice. Go ahead, use the chat box and interact with me and connect with me. 
Hasmija says emotions, emotions. Julian says memories. Wonderful. Kritika says time and thoughts. Very nice. Yes. Go ahead. Use the chat box and then interact with me and connect with me. Wonderful. Thank you guys for doing that. Yes. So many of you got the right answer. One thing, all the answers are right. Definitely thoughts with us, time travels with us, people also come and go. But one thing that definitely constantly travels with us right from the time you're born, the first thing that we hear is you cry, isn't it? And all the way till our death is emotions. And emotions play a vital role in how you live your entire life. It's not about passing through this life, but how do you get the results that you want in your life? How do you get um, the in, make an impact in people's life? How do you ensure that you are very productive? How do you ensure that you get the maximum out of this life? And that can be done by ensuring that you bring a lot of awareness in how you process your emotions, how you live your emotions, how you let go of emotions. All of this plays a very, very vital role. And that is something that we are going to be looking at today. So when you look at this picture, what comes to your mind? Again, can you go all? Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for chatting out there in the chat box. Go ahead and also, uh, can you tell me uh, what do you, when you look at this picture, what comes to your mind? Go ahead and type and let me know. I think only the questions option is working for all of you. Chat is there for only internal purpose. So go ahead and then use the question box and then let me know. When you look at this, victory says Aishwarya, Trying to meet a goal says Parthi Balaji, wonderful. Bharati says looking a goal ahead, wonderful. It symbolizes a goal, very nice, finding one's goal, how to reach one place, wonderful. Can you also quickly let me know one goal that you have, one goal that you have, something that you want to achieve in the, it could be near future, something that could be long term. What is one goal that you have that you want to reach? Many of you said try to reach the goal, wonderful, awesome. You guys are doing great. Can you also tell me what is, one goal that you want to achieve in the near future it could be anything it could be securing a job it could be having peace it could be buying something yeah and says to make my parents proud wonderful that's a good goal to have operations manager right in the next quick five years says ranjit wonderful go ahead and let me know what is one goal that you have and you want to achieve become an administrator very nice financial freedom says Amudan, PhD, very nice to earn and make my parents proud to pass the degrees in flying colors. Wonderful. Awesome. Now, all of you keep go ahead and type it. Good care of parents. Okay, great. Now, one concept which I'm going to be sharing about right now, if you understand this concept and if you start applying it, your entire life will change. The way you live your life will completely change, right? If you understand this one concept that I'm only talking about, and if you start practicing it and putting it as part of your life. Now, what, whenever we are going towards a particular goal, right? answer this question for me. What happens when you achieve this goal? You have some goal, right? Many of you said, no, achieve a good position, become a great lecturer, um, make money, become um, financial freedom, make my parents proud. What happens when you achieve this goal? Right. Whenever you are achieving a good position, you're getting the degree that you want, you're getting the job that you want, you're making your parents happy. What happens when you achieve that particular goal? Self-satisfaction. Very good. And if you're saying self-satisfaction, feeling of wanting to do more. Wonderful. What else? Happy. Very nice. Feeling contented. Awesome. Gana. What else? When you finish, what happens when you achieve this goal? Right. We might have to attend more happiness. After achievement, we are fix one more goal. <laughs> yes, many of us do that. Yes, what else? Inner peace, says Sonia, wonderful. Satisfaction, feel proud and satisfied, wonderful. Go ahead and type this in the chat box for me, please. Go ahead and type. At the end, emotional state. Can you go ahead and type that in the chat box? I want all of you, 286 of you, go ahead and type in the chat box. Emotional state. What do I mean by that? At the end of every single goal, is an emotional state. Let me repeat that. At the end of every single goal is an emotional state. Go ahead and type that in the chat box. Emotional state, emotional state. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. What? Why are we asking this? Now, if you understand this, that all that I'm doing for is to get that particular emotional state. What is an emotional state? Many of you said it's satisfaction, it's happiness, it's peace, it's contentment, fulfillment. 
all these are emotional states. Any work that we do in our life, the reason why we are doing that particular work is to achieve a particular emotional state. So I might say that I want to build this house, then I will be happy. Or I can say that I want to buy something for my parents, then I'll be happy. I get this job, then I'll be proud, then I'll be uh, safe, I'll feel secured, I'll feel accomplished, I'll feel satisfied. All these are emotional states. The reason why we do anything, why we go after any particular goal is because of the emotional state that we want to be in at the end of achieving that particular goal. How many of you agree to this? Thank you so much for typing emotional state. How many of you agree to this? Go ahead and type agree in the chat box. Agree, agree, agree. Go ahead and type that in the chat box. For 280 plus people understand this. The reason why we do anything is because we want a particular emotional state at the end of every single goal. Thank you so much for all of you, Roshni, Samyukta, Nirmala, Vaidishwaran, Harini. Thank you so much for typing that. Now, understand this. Now, there are two ways how we can go through this entire process. Now, you can go through this goal of whatever it is. It could be one year, it could be two years, or three years, or five years, or 15 years, right? You can kill yourself in this journey. Make yourself very, very miserable. Make it very, very difficult for you, and then achieve that particular goal, right? And then look at yourself and, what have I done? Where am I right now? I, I All this efforts and energy and all of that, I'm not able to feel it. You're going there, 250, uh, 2050, you have a goal. You push yourself really, really hard. You make it difficult for yourself and for your family. You go and then reach that 2050. And you're standing there at 2015, looking at, is this what I really wanted? Right? Is this really wanted? Because you're not able to experience what you want. What you need to do, the second option that we have is to focus on whatever emotional state that you want to achieve at the end of achieving that particular goal, whatever is the emotional state, go through it every single day of your life. Every single day of your life, go through that particular emotion, whether it's contentment or satisfaction or fulfillment, right? And enjoy every single step towards that particular goal. Then even if, even if you have not completely achieved the goal, even if you have touched 70%, 80%, doesn't matter, you will enjoy life because you choose to live that emotional state every single day. Can you also go ahead and type in the chat box for me, please? Journey is as important as the destination. Go ahead and type this in the chat box. Journey is as important as the destination. And this COVID has definitely definitely taught this to each and every one of us, isn't it? This COVID has been a great learning for each and every one of us to understand this. Wonderful, thank you so much for typing that in the chat box, right? And COVID has taught us to enjoy this day. COVID has taught us to enjoy this particular food that you have in front of you. COVID has taught us to enjoy the people that you have around you, right? Even my family, we had a great experience. My father had uh, first got COVID, then my mother went through that, then my grandfather, my brother-in-law, my sister, my entire family went through COVID. And, and my brother-in-law was very, very critical at one point of time. And he was almost nearing, right? He had about 70, 75% infected. And then he had a rebirth, actually. And this definitely teaches us to understand that whatever you have in front of you today, if you're able to enjoy that experience, and that's what life is all about, Right? Now, I'm not saying that you should not have a goal. That's not what I'm saying. Goal is very important. Goal gives you the direction which you need to do. But it's very important for us to understand that journey is as important as the destination. In my personal case, I feel journey is more important than the destination. Just by living today and giving it 100% and as much as you can live the emotional state today, Rather than saying 10 years down the line, 50 years down the line, 30 years down the line, once I achieve all my goals, then I will go and enjoy myself. If you can start focusing it on today, then the experience is going to be very, very magical. Right? So the next one that we need to go, right? How, how many of you are able to connect to whatever I'm saying? Go ahead and type connect in the chat box. Go ahead and type connect, connect, connect in the chat box. If you're able to connect to what I'm saying, right? It's so very important for us to live our lives every single day and put together all these experiences, what makes our life very, very beautiful. Thank you for all of you who are participating in the chat box and sending out these messages. It means a lot to me. It shows that there are human beings on the other side, and um, it's very, very important that we're all able to connect through this uh, option. Wonderful. 
Great. So we talked about two important things, right? So let's go ahead and take the next step. When you look at this image, what comes to your mind? When you look at this image, what comes to your mind? What do you see? Can you go ahead and type that in the chat box and let me know? When you look at this, what do you see? What? It's thank you, Ranjit. So a car, a car is resting, a <laughs> car in a garage, it's black. Okay, rear image of a car, light in darkness, wonderful. There is something which is shiny out there, right? Now, this is what I talk about emotions. Can you connect emotions in this particular image? If you, and tell me what do you see? Emotions and this particular image, if you can just connect both of this and then tell me what comes to your mind. Many of you said that, right? Uh, glow in the dark, car uh, shines in the dark. <laughs> Fear, says Srinivasan. Masculine, says no man. Shine in the dark area. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, yes, we could say that. Long drives definitely helps us to handle our emotions better. Yes, Kishinga. Um, Standalone, hmm, devil says Lokeshwari. Okay. Great. So let me tell you this. We talk a lot about emotions, right? And then we say whether emotions are good or bad. I would say neither. Let me repeat that. When many people ask me these questions, are emotions good or bad? I reply back saying neither. And my answer to those people who ask me whether emotions is good or bad, I would say emotion is an indicator. Let me repeat that. Emotion is an indicator. What do I mean by that? Can you go ahead and type in the chat box? Indicator, indicator, indicator. Let's right? send it out. All that you're typing in is for yourself. You're reinforcing this concept so that at the end of this particular session, it goes very deep inside of you. Go ahead and type indicator in the chat box and let the chat box start yeah, firing up. Thank you so much, Ram, Yana, Arun, Mohan, Sundari. So what do I mean by emotions and indicator? Let's take this example. Let's take your leg got hurt, right? Uh, you, you, something happened, you hit some, yourself somewhere and your leg got hurt. Now, normal tendency, what do we do? We're like, <clears throat> it looks like a small uh, pain. It's okay. I will ignore it. I will not really take care of it right now. And I keep walking and I keep doing my regular course of work. Next take, a week goes by. And if you're still not attending, there is a possibility that it can become septic, right? You're not treated at the wound properly. You're not taken care of properly. And then it becomes septic. Then you're like, okay, maybe some turmeric will help. <laughs> you just throw in some turmeric. And you're really not handling it in the right way. You're not probably visiting a doctor. You're not doing the right treatments. You're not taking any tablets or doing anything that is required the attention, right? So probably just done some turmeric and you're just leaving it like that. Now let's take another week goes by. What is the other possibility? The possibility is after a point of time, it can become really, really serious, isn't it? It can go to the level of seriousness that, uh, uh, if you don't treat it properly, right, they might even have to remove your leg. That is the extent it can go to, isn't it? Now, why does this happen? Is because I am not taking care of it. I am not handling it. I am not taking care of it when it at this the least level. If you keep on ignoring it, avoiding it, then it can become extreme, right? And same is the case with emotions. Same is the case with emotions. When you are not taking care of your emotions. When you're not processing your emotions, when you're not taking the indications which your emotions are giving, then it becomes a difficult a later point of time. So emotions are basically indicating to you things are going well. I'm not okay with what is happening around me. I'm not okay with the outcome that is coming, right? Or I'm not generally okay with being around these people, right? How many of us have noticed? We just walk into a room and then there are a lot of people. Suddenly, sometimes something tells us that this is not the room I should be in. How many of you have experienced that? Type I in the chat box if you have gone through that particular experience. Sometimes we walk into a room and we notice that you're not very comfortable in that particular space, right? Yeah, many of you are saying I, right? And then you want to move away. And there is another set of rooms that we walk in. And then suddenly you are able to connect with all of these people. You're able to gel with all of them, right? And then suddenly you feel good in that particular space, right? Probably after COVID, when you walk into college, you will feel that you when you're meeting your friends, right? And you're able to connect with all of them. So that's another experience that we have. Now, why are we going through these two experiences? Is because emotion is indicating to you, this is comfortable for me. This is not comfortable to me. Now, one of the most powerful way to increase your awareness is just look at the indicators that your emotions is giving you. Most of the times, most of the time, just looking at the emotions. Now, you should not get caught up with it. 
you should not start get muddled with it you should not go into it but observing your emotions can help you to enhance the way you live your entire life it clearly indicates to you sometimes way ahead of what things are happening right so understand this emotions are neither good or bad emotions are an indicator and it is our friend it is our friend and it is telling you all the time with how do you feel inside and this is the easiest measure to see how you are living your entire life right so hope that makes a very clear sense so let's go ahead and then understand three quick ways to come out of some emotions that is not supportive right so uh, let's take you are going through uh, anger at this point of time or you're going through some sadness something happened and the emotions indicator is throwing up sadness you're going through anger you're going through frustration you're going through some um, um, frustration how do we come out of it very very quickly right i'm going to share that if you want to listen to that go ahead and type three 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 in the chat box so that i can take you through that particular concept go ahead and type three roshni is the first one to type it right awesome roshni so go ahead and type three 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 in the chat box so that you are all ready right and then ram is a differentiator he types t h r w e <laughs> awesome ranjit thank you so much so we're going to look at three ways how you can do it you might be aware of this right you might be aware of this it's about whether you're putting to practice or not can you also type in the chat box knowing is not doing can you also type this in the chat box knowing is not doing why because the next three concepts that i'm going to be sharing about you might know it but the the question is are you practicing it or not right go ahead and type knowing is not doing awesome 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 i can see about 30 40 of them typing in the message i would love all the 298 of you going in and typing in the chat box let's fire the chat box great so the first one is this the first one is this right i'm going to give you three quick ways to come out of emotions that is not supportive that is not helping you that is not supporting you this is the first one take a guess take a guess and let me know in the chat box what do you think this is what do you think this is what is one of the ways to come out of emotions that's not supporting you logesh where he says joy having fun went out very nice <clears throat> complete happiness exploring recognizing it wonderful anupriya that's good happiness great all these are right answers what i am uh, trying to say here is this emotion right emotion is energy in motion <clears throat> let me repeat that emotion is energy in motion what do i mean by that now when you want an emotion to shift when you want an emotion to change and you want an emotion to move then you have to give energy right so emotions and energy are connected depending on the emotions that you go through your energy also varies right it goes up and downs depending on the emotion that you go through so if you want a shift in your emotion then you need to bring in energy right any form of movement one of the things that we have as a big challenge is we are not moving enough right we go to a place let's say you're going to college and you sit and then we're sitting there for a long period of time you take up work we're sitting there in that particular space for a long period of time what happens is some negative emotion we picked up some non-supportive emotion we picked up let's say i was on the way to office someone hit my vehicle i got angry if i've not consciously released that particular emotion when i walk come into office i'm going to be shouting at all the people out there I go and sit in one place in one cubicle and i'm sitting there for the whole day then we go through something called as a downward spiral one something that stops as as simple as you no know, not okay right not in the right emotional state can go to or anger can go to worry can go to hatred can go to not feeling worthy can go to fear can go, go all the way to victimized right so these are various emotions that we process if you are not having movement can you all type in the chat box a brisk walk brisk walk can you go on and type brisk a simple process as brisk walk right getting up and then moving having a brisk walk just having a walk can definitely shift the way you process your emotions now many a times if you're just sitting in one place just sitting in one place let me tell you you are not breaking the emotions if you're happy if you're excited you're doing really well then it's okay to sit but otherwise every 15 to 20 minutes right at least it's about 30 minutes get up and move 
and when you move you're shifting your body and your emotions start to change right so a simple exercise i usually give but i can't see you guys so it's difficult but um i request i, I i'm gonna assume that you guys are doing it along with me right i i i really assume they're gonna do it with me go ahead and do this put your hands up put your hands up and look up wherever you're sitting right if you're having a mobile keep it down and then do that so take your hands up right and then look up for a second i'm gonna i all of you please do it along with me look up and then put your hands up let's do it for 10 seconds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten can you tell me in the chat box how did you feel looking up how did you feel can you tell me in the chat box when you looked up and your hands were up right relaxed calm very nice felt relaxed if you've not done that quickly do that exercise and also type in the chat box relax free like crying unto god very nice that's good yeah you can invite some energy from above that's good calm relaxed pleasant see this is look at this what you did you used your body right you just looked up now if we can try it one more time i want to look up put your hands up and try to feel sad Try to feel sad in this particular position, please. Put your hands up. This is called as a victory position. Like, yeah, right? So put your hands up, look up, and try to feel sad. And let me know in the chat box <laughs> if it is possible for you to feel sad. Was it possible for you to feel sad in that particular position? No, right? Yeah, says Ranjit, Samyukta, not really. No, 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 no. Yes, wonderful. No. See? As simple as that so what do we mean here is your body and emotions are very much connected and by just looking up this is called as a victory position right so we're just looking up you can change now if you do the opposite of it i'm not going to ask you to do that but if you just keep looking down if you just keep looking down and you're not um, uh, your body is down your shoulders are down if you do it for some point of time unconsciously you go into feeling sad you will feel down, you will feel demotivated, you will not feel geared up, right? And this is something that happens inside of us. And just by shifting that, right, energy is motion, right, emotions, by movement, by doing a brisk walk, by doing a victory pose, by looking up, you can change your emotions. How many of you found that interesting? Go ahead and type interesting in the chat box. Type interesting, interesting, interesting in the chat box, right? And this is what is possible for each and every one of us, right? So the first one, how do you get out of negative emotions? How do you come out of emotions that is not supportive? Change your body, movement, right? The first one is simple as that. Wonderful, great. Thank you so much for sharing that. It is interesting to you. The second one, take a guess, take a guess, take a guess. What is this? What is the second way to come out of negative emotion? Quickly, how do we do that? <laughs> water, yes, it is water. <clears throat> Drink water and relax, empty your glass, liquid, half full or half empty, says Ram, pour out. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, this is drinking water, by the way, just letting you know, right? If you, you know. So definitely drinking water has such a powerful impact. Let me tell you quickly uh, how this entire process works. Now, water, right? Water has got one unique capacity, right? One unique uh, nature. What is this nature? If you keep saying good things to this water, it observes this energy. And if you keep saying negative things to this water, it also observes this energy, right? So Dr. Emoto did a research. You can go and Google it and you will find it on YouTube. There are so many videos out there, so many pictures out there. What they noticed is they kept playing good music to this water and then they froze this water and they looked under a microscope and they watched the molecular level shift had happened. Those water which was not treated was different and the same water they took and then they did some chanting to it and then they found the molecular level shift. They said words to it like Mother Teresa and they found it shift. They found, said words like Hitler and it looked very, very bad. So the water that was had good energy, they looked beautiful. They looked so amazing. It looked like crystals, right? And the water which was where they said negative things and they shouted at it, it looked very, very bad, right? Not not something that you would enjoy looking at now what does it say water is so very powerful 
it can absorb energy and give it to you right and by consciously drinking water right so the best way to do it is this now the water that we have in our homes right okay let me tell you before this quickly <clears throat> to understand make you understand it much more deeper when you go to a temple what do they give you when you go to a temple what do they give you go ahead quickly let me know in the chat box when you go to a temple what do they give you tirtham wonderful great yeah we yeah tirtham right which is water that has been chanted when you go to a church what do they give you when you go to a church what do they give you <laughs> yes they also give you wine what else holy water wonderful thank you so much when you go to a church they give you holy water right again what water which has been prayed which has been there and then they give you that that changes your molecular level shift right when you go to a mosque again they give you water right if you see that you're not feeling well you're not doing uh, great and you have some challenge etc if you go to a mosque they do a prayer and they go open up a bottle and then they pray into the bottle right and they say drink this water uh, take bath in this particular water and that will make a shift right or well, let's go all the way back to our ancestors when they were a lot of gurus right big big gurus which were there they had something in their hand any idea all these big gurus in there who did so much amount of uh, yoga they were doing so much amount of meditation they they had something in their hand wonderful kamandalam right it's called kamandalam right and what do they have in the kamandalam what do they have in the kamandalam they had water right and if they had to bless you they would pour that water send out an intention and then they throw it it becomes a blessing and if they want to curse you same water <laughs> same comment up and then they would go ahead and then put on that curse and then throw it on you and it becomes that now water has played such an important role all throughout our lives right one last thing when people come to your home what is the first thing that you give them when people come to your homes we are not even aware we are not conscious of why we do that particular process when people when they come to your home what do we give them what do we give them we give them water isn't it why do we give them water because when you give it from a state of love when you give it from a state of love and the molecular level shifts happens in the water and when they drink it they can feel your love no matter what tension or pressure or whatever it is that they came from and that is the impact of water so first is if you can keep water in a mud pot and then drink from that it changes and it is very very good for you it keeps you energized the whole day now if you don't have mud pot you can't handle mud pot the second option is to have a copper vessel and then drink from that it is again proven that if it is in the copper vessel for 3 to 5 hours then the energy molecular level shift happens you can't have that then you have a bottle which is made up of copper or glass and then have it from that again it shifts Now, if you don't have all of this, then the last option is this. The last option is before drinking a water, before drinking water, put out an intention. Take care of me, heal me. Talk to the water, heal me. Take care of me, right? And this is how you drink. Notice this. You have to just take one gill. You swirl it a couple of times, and then you put it inside. Don't drink it like that. Uh, don't try to take in so much amount of water take one sip at a time swirl it in your mouth and then send it inside it changes the energy right so what is the second option that i gave you right the first one is to shift emotion is energy in motion if to make shift um, movement right and the second one we are talking about is drinking water right and this is something which will change right how many of you are going to apply this tell me i in the chat box how many of you now are going to consciously drink water let me know in the chat box so that you will shift no matter what are the emotions that you're going through just by bringing in conscious way of drinking water you can quickly quickly come out of emotions that is not very supportive just bring consciousness bring connection to the water and then drink that and it will help you wonderful karen thank you so much for doing that with me right awesome great so let's go into the third one so <laughs> now usually we have videos on i can see people also so I, i do the third method but right now that option is not available so but i'm going to just quickly play one short snip of that video and then i'm going to move on and if you are a fan of him you i want you to let me know in the chat box right this is the third method i want you to guess it in the chat box 
and as you're guessing i'm going to play it for some time and then i'm going to move away from this right go ahead and guess what is the third technique by which you can come out of negative emotions quickly go ahead and guess absolutely thank you so much third method is that which is dance right or any form of physical exercise right i just use dance as an example yes it because it's a physical movement right so in uh, heavier emotions understand this brisk walk and all of that or uh, uh, just standing up and stretching yourself or looking up and all of that is is something that will help you for shorter emotions right uh, but when it comes to bigger emotions something that you want uh, it to be handled in a very powerful way something which is heavier it can't just be done let me quickly uh, share some of the experiences i have been and i told you right uh, my entire family had gone through uh, they are in tiruchi i am in chennai I, I couldn't even travel there i could not even take, go and take care of my family so there were a lot of challenges that was happening and how did i come out of it one of the powerful ways for me right even though i was losing it i was losing my emotions um even though we are an emotional alchemist it happens to each and every one of us we get engulfed with these emotions and i found badminton right for me that it's something that i played it during my uh, childhood as i grew up and i started connecting back to childhood and i started going back to the court again i started playing the moment i started to go back to court and start playing i was able to feel much more connected with myself and i started feeling more confident i started feeling more happier more productive my physical movements started to come back so all of it started to have a big impact and change inside of me when i connected to one game right so whatever it is for you it could be dance right it could be uh, playing a game right not the ones on the video games right but if you can connect to any game right and start playing that game it believe me it will have a big 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 huge impact in the way you are able to handle emotions your ability to handle uh, victories ability to handle pain ability to handle failure all of it is with, becomes very strong and powerful when you are connected to some form of a physical activity so i would highly 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 recommend right today dance is even possible just by connecting on a video right you don't need to even travel to another place you can just uh, connect to all the online classes which is available and start using them so make it a part of your life to use right physical activity uh connect to one game or one physical activity and this has to become part of your life and by doing that your ability to handle your emotions overcome difficulties and challenges and failures becomes really 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 powerful right can you go ahead and type committed in the chat box if you are committed of finding one thing that will make you happy it's very very important right go ahead and type committed 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 in the chat box right if you feel that you will find one thing that will enhance your emotions right not only about studies it's also about handling people it's about handling tantrums at homes so everything will change if you connect yourself right uh, today physical activity has become so very less right and and by just finding one thing that you can connect back to will change the way you live your life thank you so much great yeah gardening is great jay kumar wonderful wonderful all of you so now we talked about three ways how you can come and change your emotions very quickly by doing that particular process right you can come out of it very quickly let's understand some more concepts uh, now now what do you think are we emotional people or rational people what are we right are we emotional people or rational people use the chat box and let me know are you emotional or rational go ahead type 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 in the chat box both emotional some of kiran says i am emotional understood emotional emotional <laughs> okay so let me change the question and ask in a different way right now uh, what comes first for any experience that you go through whether emotions comes first or rational comes first can you let me know in the chat box for any experience that you go through what comes first any of you saying emotions first ram says rational first wonderful depends on the situation yeah kirtika what are you using now rational mind is it so um, emotions come first 
Okay, great, very good. Many of you have uh, said emotion, some of you have said rational. Let me look at this. Okay, now, <clears throat> how do you experience the world? Simple question. Let me see how is getting the right answer. How do you experience the world around you? Can you let me know in the chat box? How do you experience the world around you? This is a simple question, but many times I find people are struggling to get the answer for this. How do you experience the world around you? Mm -hmm. Kritika says, by living in the moment, by exposing, interacting with society, correct, all these are there. Even before this process, even before interaction, even before exposing ourselves, what happens? The emotions is around, very good, before that. Even before emotion comes. Harini says, observing, curiosity, okay, even before that. How do you experience the world? Sonia says, people talk, okay, acknowledging, okay. Let me tell you, we experience the world around us using five senses. I told you it's gonna be a simple answer, but many of us don't get it. Go ahead and type five senses in the chat box for me, please. We experience the world around us using the five senses, right? And we many times ignore it. <laughs> The five senses is what we use to experience the world, but we get connected to all the other things on the outside, but we leave the five senses. I'm using my eyes to see you. I'm using my ears to hear, but somewhere I forget that I have a hear. I somewhere forget that I have a high, right? Many a times, they go type five senses, five senses, five senses, wonderful, right? So we experience the world using these five senses. What are the five senses? Uh, already and I uh, mentioned it, yes. So what is it? First is eyes to see our ears to hear right nose to smell tongue to taste and then touch these are the five different senses now e these five senses is what we use to experience the world around us now imagine if i don't have one of the senses i'm not able to see what happens that experience is completely cut for me i can't go through that particular experience isn't it if i can't hear then that particular experience is not there in my life if i can't touch then that particular experience is not there. No, any of these experiences, I lose it, right? I can't have that experience in my life. So these five senses, you know, we should be so grateful, so, so grateful that we have these five uh, senses by which we're able to experience the world around us. Now, all these senses, the way it works, right? For example, this, right? I'm, what am I doing? I'm just touching my hand, isn't it? I'm just touching my hand. Just See how beautiful life is. I touch it, right? Try that, try that. In less than a second, in less than a second, there is a signal that is going and telling my brain that I have touched something. How beautiful it is, right? Anything that you touch, just less than a second, there is a message that is going through you and it touches your brain and says, I've touched something. That's how in nanoseconds it's traveling through you, right? So all these signals travel through your body, they go through, it's an electric signal. It goes through the spinal cord and then goes all the way to the neck and it goes to the brain. That's how they all travel. Any experience that you go through, they go through as an electric signal. They go through your spinal cord, then they're going through the brain, right? And they, when they touch the brain, they touch the first part of the brain, which is called as the limbic system. Can you all type limbic in the chat box for me, please? Limbic, 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 limbic. The first place the signals go and touch is the limbic system, which is your emotional brain. Thank you all so much for typing in. Thank you all for staying connected and then constantly messaging. There are about 290 plus people. I see a lot of people constantly coming and typing in. I want all of you to participate. Uh, go ahead, type, type limbic, 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 limbic in the chat box. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, the, what is limbic system? This is the emotional part of the brain, which means what? For any experience, the first thing that comes out of us is emotions. It could be something that you're seeing, something that you are hearing, something that you are um, you know, tasting, something that you are touching. For any of these experiences, the first thing that comes out of us is emotions. And then what is the next part, which is the rational part? This is where the rational part is stored. Right? If you forget something, what do you do? You're like, I forgot that. Right? How many of you do that? 
Like when you forget something, we have a habit like I I forgot that. How many of you have the type I in the chat box? Yeah, what he says I do, right? We like I, I forgot that. Why why don't we touch here? Like I forgot that. Why do we do here? Oh, I missed it. I forgot it, right? Why do many of you are seeing that? Shati Priya, Roshni, Harshita, Harita. Sorry, yeah. Why do we do that? Is because this is where the rational brain is. This is where the rational brain is, right? Now this is the forehead part. Now, which means what? For any particular experience, first comes emotions, and after a point of time, if the rational part kicks in and it starts running, right? So let me ask you the next question: If you have to become rational, if you have to take a decision without being emotional. If you have to work from a space of rational, what do you need to do? I've already given you the answer. Let me see if you've got the answer. So if you have to not allow your emotions to control you, but if you want to take a decision or an action from a space of what do we need to do? Can you tell me in the chat box? Think. Yes, Jay Kumar. No, the answer is there in what have awareness. Wonderful. What else? For any experience, what comes first is the emotions. But I should not just react from the space of emotion. But I have to do it from the space of rational. Wonderful, Kritika, you're almost there. Keep calm. Don't jump into conclusions immediately. <clears throat> Wonderful. That's almost the right answer. <clears throat> Accepting them, great. The easiest thing that we need to do is give it some time. You have to just give it some time. If you give it some time, the rational part will kick in, right? Now, how many of times have you heard, right? Some you are getting angry. People say count one to ten. Have you heard that count one to ten? <laughs> The reason why they ask you to do it, this is the ration behind it. When you count and you're giving it some time, if you give it some time to move it from the limbic system to the rational part of the brain, when you start thinking, become your ability to handle it becomes very, very strong and powerful, right? So yes, even the important decisions in our life, what we ask people to do, we ask people to sleep over it. It's an important decision. We ask people to sleep over it. Why we ask them to sleep over it? Because you allow the brain to operate from its rational space rather than from an emotional space. So let's take you are having a meeting and it's not going the right way you want. You give a break. You tell them, let's take a break. Let's take 10 minutes and then come back. By the time you take a break and you come back, your emotional brain would have settled down and your rational part would start kicking in. So if you want your rational part to come and become active, the easiest way to do it is give it some time. By doing that, your ability to handle uh, run numbers and everything becomes very, very uh, possible, right? So any difficult situation, what you need to do, go ahead and type it in the chat box, please give it some time. If you have to become rational in your decisions, in your actions and all of that, the easiest way to do that is this. You have to give it some time. Go and type it in the chat box, give it some time, give it some time, give it some time, right? So you're getting stressed. Let's say you're going into an exam hall, right? And then you look at the question paper. The moment you look at the question paper, you remember immediately one question. I'm like, oh my God, I, I, you know, I don't know the answer for this, right? And what happens, your emotion starts kicking in. And if you allow your emotions to start handling you, then you, you, you can't do the best in the next three hours, right? Everything goes in for a toss. Rather, you just allow the question paper, look at it, right? Give it some time. Even if you're taking a one minute, two minutes break to just do calm yourself, you just do a little bit of meditation, notice your breath, and then you come back, you will definitely, definitely for sure see a shift in your emotions. You'll become much, much more calmer and your ability to give the best to all the other questions becomes much more easier and much more possible. Someone is coming and shouting at you. Someone is throwing anger at you, right? Instead of immediately reacting back to them, give it some time, give it some time. You just make them to sit down, give them some drinking water and say, I can see that you're very angry right now. I don't want to uh, discuss right now. I wanted to have a seat and give them some water. Let them drink the water. When you're giving the water, put out an intention. Give it a lot of love and give it to them. Let them drink that water. And then slowly start the conversation. You will see there is a shift that will happen. 
right? So we have seen some powerful uh, tool, right? How many of you are able to connect to this? Go ahead and type connect, connect, connect in the chat box. So whenever you see that people are very emotional or whether you are very emotional, you I want you to take some time, right? Take some time. So <clears throat> it could be a patient, it could be a client, it could be a customer, it could be your family members. Whenever you see that they are very emotional, right? Give them some time and you will see that they are shifting, right? Even my son, when my son is shouting, he's crying, he's like, ah, daddy, I'm not able to do this. Uh, what I do is I, I just uh, take him out to the balcony and make him stand there. I uh, make him to connect to nature. I suddenly ask questions about that tree and this bird and all of that, right? And then I give him some water to drink. And then I, I put my hand on over his shoulder and ask him, okay, now tell me what happened. And you can see suddenly he's able to communicate better. He's able to express himself much better. He's able to share his feelings much more better. Earlier, like a few minutes back, he's shouting and you know, hauling and making it difficult for himself and for all of us, right? And just by doing that time, you can shift that. Wonderful. So happy that all of you got the answers and all of you are able to connect to it. Thank you, Jay Kumar, Samita, Ram for doing that. Let's quickly understand this, right? We talked about awareness. Uh, we noticed that John sir had talked about external and internal awareness. Now, I have my own theory of how there are four different levels of awareness that we have right and uh, from my experience this is something that i've noticed many of the people are uh, even though they have awareness <laughs> the levels of awareness are completely different for uh, each other right and let's talk about this the first level of awareness is this was i angry what does it mean angry the word uh, anger i've used it as a metaphor here you can use any other emotions you can connect it to sadness you can connect it to fear right disappointment whatever you want now, what am I meaning here? Can you go ahead and type in the chat box and let me know? What am I trying to say here? What is this? When I say ask the question, was I angry? What is the emotion level I'm talking about? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, go ahead and type in the chat box. We have 307 of you who have joined in now, 308. Good. Stressed. Okay, recognition. Very good. And if you're almost there, what do we mean by that? When I say, was I angry, what, do we, what is this? What do I mean by that? Finding out the reason, past tense, wonderful. Can we all give a round of acknowledgement for Kritika, please, right? Past tense, what do I mean? So, yes, I am not even aware that I was angry. People are pointing out to me and saying, Ganesh, you know, you were angry at that. Was I angry? When? Me? angry what are you talking about right <laughs> if that is how i'm reacting how many of you are able to connect to certain people like that right so if they they go through so much of anger they shout at you and then when you ask them you were angry me when i was not angry right and that's how they re revert back to us right they are wonderful uh, dr purima yes they are unaware of their emotions they're not even aware that they went through that particular emotion they're not even conscious that they had a particular emotion that we have let me tell you, most of the people, most of the people, 90% of the times are not conscious and not aware of emotions. They are not uh, processing their emotions consciously. One minute, let me try. Mute, sir. Yes. 90% of the times, most of us are not consciously processing our emotions. We are trying to ignore it all the time. We are trying to avoid it all the time. We think that if I handle a particular emotion, then uh, no, it, it becomes difficult for us. No, it is very, very important for us to bring awareness to our emotions. If we don't bring awareness of our emotions, we can't handle it. We can't process it. It's not possible for us to go through the next level. Okay. Now, this is the first level of awareness where people are not even aware that they were angry, right? So let's go to the second one. What, what do you think is the second level of awareness? Can you type in the chat box and let me know? What do you think is the second level of awareness from a space of complete unaware? What do you think is the unaware? Use the same metaphor and then type in the chat box. <laughs> yeah, even if they don't accept they are angry, that's yeah, Ponmadi, correct. But either easier upon how do we do that? Realizing own emotions. Okay. Okay, many of you are trying to acknowledge this Roshni. Okay, let me give you the answer. The answer is this. I was angry earlier. This is the second level of awareness. 
what is the second level of awareness after a point of time i'm able to bring to my awareness that yeah yeah correct correct i should have not reacted so angrily i was angry at that particular moment or i was sad at that point of time yes i was frustrated with what had happened right now this is the second level of awareness it comes after some time the first level you are not even aware that you went through that particular emotion the second level is where you after some time you recognize right oh, yes yeah i was angry in the morning then that is the second level of awareness right great now this is okay right but is this what we want to go no we have further stages that we can approach right go ahead and type in the chat box what do you think is the third level of awareness the first level is you are not even aware the second level is you come to awareness after some period of time what do you think is the third level <laughs> jekuma says i have overcome angry okay uh we still go don't go there uh, aishwarya that's still another level apologize and accept yes but not there yet still damage control overcome that feeling bad okay now the third level of awareness is this i am angry now go ahead and type that in the chat box for me please i am angry now this is the third level right now the first level i was not even aware the second level i was aware after some period of time the third level is when i am aware of it as it is happening to me as i am going through anger i am aware as i am experiencing that particular emotion i am aware the moment you bring this level of awareness then shifts start changing in your life the moment you bring awareness that yes i am angry right now immediately there is a shift that will happen your anger will reduce now this is the level of anger that you had the moment you bring awareness that i am angry right now it will reduce the moment you bring awareness that i am sad right now it will reduce the moment you bring awareness that i am frustrated right now it will reduce this is the third level of awareness and this is so very important for us to get to this level right and the final level the fourth level is this i am going to get angry i am going to get angry this is not going to happen tomorrow this is not going to happen uh, after two days i am going to get angry no from the moment you experience something from the moment you experience something and the moment that anger comes out there is a gap can anyone guess what is the gap from the moment you experience something and the moment that anger comes out there is a small gap between that can you tell me what is the time gap between them <laughs> feeling tense says anjit okay anjit says 2 seconds wonderful ram says depends on the experiencer if it is my father i will quickly get angry if it is my mother i will probably give her some more time if it is my girlfriend i will i'll be okay perfectly <laughs> it depends on the experience and the person says ram or oh, 10 seconds is gyana some conversations okay wonderful the right answer is 3 seconds can you go ahead and type in the chat box 3 seconds 3 3 3 3 3 3 seconds go ahead and type it in the chat box fill it up 330 people we have logged in right now go ahead and type 3 seconds even if you have just joined in right now you don't even know what's happening here doesn't matter go ahead and type like the way we put attendance in a classroom right go ahead and type 3 seconds 3 seconds 3 seconds yeah Still, lot more of you have yet to chat. Go ahead, type it, type it, type it, type it. Connect with me. It's so very important for you to connect and use the chat box to interact with me, so that we know. I will come to that look. Yes, three seconds. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Kavya, Achaya, Praveen Kumar. Wonderful. Even if you've joined a new, connect with me and and use the chat box to interact with me, so that we can connect very easily. Right. Right. now what we need to do how do we use these 3 seconds effectively an experience has happened what is the experience somebody shouted at me or somebody came and hit my vehicle someone is honking behind me or i touched something hard or uh, some experience is not good enough for me i i got a message i read that message from the moment i read that message immediately i am in the emotions right so this 3 seconds gap you do a break state can you go ahead and type in the chat box break state break state break state break state go ahead and type that right 
now you have a choice in that three seconds to do a break state which is the break state i already talked about that break state right one is drinking water another one i talked about is going for a brisk walk or doing a quick dance right or focusing on your breath bringing your awareness to your breath by doing any of these activities you can quickly come out of that particular emotions you need not go into that process right understand we have patterns we are all living by patterns what is the pattern you experience a particular you go through a particular experience we have a pattern of immediately a particular emotion getting triggered somebody shouted at me immediately anger somebody shouted at me immediately disappointment somebody shouted at me i will revert back to them you have a pattern now these patterns are many a times unconscious patterns can you all type the word pattern 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 it's very important for us to bring awareness to this word pattern each one of us are living our lives through patterns we are robots right 99% of the times we are only going through the patterns that we have built inside of us we are not consciously living life we are unconsciously living the patterns that we have designed inside of us right how many of you agree to that yes anjit i will definitely take questions but uh, we, let me go through that flow and then um, i think last uh, 15 to 20 minutes i'm going to open up questions for you sure yeah so go ahead and type uh, right uh, how many of you are able to understand that we have patterns in our life <clears throat> and patterns is what running us how we drive your vehicle how you drink water how you brush your teeth right how you attend a class how you dress yourself anything that we do in our lives there is a pattern and if you're conscious of your pattern is how you break your life and how you change the way you live your life if you're not conscious of your patterns then you keep reliving your entire day life every single day right it becomes very monotonous now how do you change your emotions is by breaking that pattern in the 3 seconds by breaking that pattern in the 3 seconds by becoming conscious of your pattern that when this particular experience happens in about 3 seconds this is the emotions i start emitting and this is what starts controlling me so by becoming conscious and breaking it you can change the way you emote your emotions and the rest of your life right patterns means habits yes patterns mean behavior right so what we need to do is those 3 seconds the moment right if you bring start bringing awareness to your emotions what's going to happen is this you go through a particular experience someone shouts at you instead of reverting back you keep yourself calm and you probably drink water you bring awareness to your breath or if it is possible you stand and say give me 2 minutes and then you go for a brisk walk by doing that you bring you bring control back to yourself you take control of your emotions rather than the emotions control you right if you got that got type got it in the chat box type got it got it got it got it in the chat box please type got it in the chat box got it got it got it yeah wonderful so that's what i want all of you to do right next time onwards instead of saying that someone did it for me he made me angry this person made me feel sad this situation created it right or the client took control of me instead of putting it on somebody else understand that you have the power to shift it to change it even though they are the ones who could be inducing that particular scenario or experience into your life you take charge of your life and you can start shifting it right so we saw four levels of awareness i want you to bring awareness to which level you are right now go ahead and type in the chat box are you at level 1 are you at level 2 level 3 level 4 which level are you go ahead and type in the chat box as of now most of the experiences that you are going through in your life which level are you are you at 1 2 3 and 4 go ahead and let me know in the chat box ram says 3 2 says himha yana says 3 3 level 1 no priya okay level 1 is uh was i angry okay level 3 lokesh very lok says 2 aishwarya 2 saran 1 very nice ranjit okay so do we have any level 4 here all the people who are attending it go ahead and type in that 
this is to bring awareness to this is to bring consciousness type any one of these levels where are you right now use the chat box interact with me and that's how you get the maximum from this particular session we have lots of you are listening but just listening alone will not make the difference right when you bring awareness when you think and reflect for a few seconds and you type in the chat box that is awareness that is action that is change that is what will make or break go ahead use the chat box type in the chat box and let me know which level are you go ahead on you yeah use the chat box and let us know on my this is i am in level 4 hmm <laughs> mitra balaji says i am angry now i understand i acknowledge that level 4 wonderful great use the chat box guys i want all of you to type in let me know i'm waiting for each of your answers every one of your answers is important for me wonderful go ahead type it type it great <clears throat> awesome thank you so much wonderful so now now that you know which level you are i have also told you the technique how to break off that particular process right i told you that there is the more you practice your emotions right and you bring awareness so now there are many ways how you can bring awareness one of the most powerful way to bring awareness to your emotions is meditation right by meditating on a regular level by constantly being in a space Uh, at least 5 minutes a day if you are able to go and to connect with yourself connect with your inner world right connect with your breath and just be there your awareness levels will start rocketing skyrocketing already i told you just find one game and then start playing that particular game right so if you are able to combine these two great awesome level of awareness levels you will have right so if you are doing a some physical activity every single day having a game that you are playing you are sweating out every single day and the second part of it if you are uh, you are doing meditation right for 5 minutes every single day right the simplest of meditation is just to focus on your breath that's it just to focus on your breath by doing that you will see that you will be immensely able to increase your level of awareness to level 4 right and if you are able to get to level 4 then you can avoid most of the stress that you are going through in your life you can avoid most of the tension that you are going through in your life you can be you can take charge of your life and start controlling it the external situations will lose power the external situations will lose power and you will start running your life by yourself right so go ahead and work on this right can you type in the chat box consciousness consciousness right increase your consciousness become aware of the actions that you are doing become aware of your emotions become aware of your thoughts become aware and that in by doing that your ability to live a beautiful life a beautiful life is possible for each and every one of us thank you so much for doing that now at any given point of time in our life we are constantly vibrating at any given moment of time the cells in our body we are all made up of cells and the cells are constantly vibrating they are vibrating at different frequencies this is a study that is done by dr richard uh, he this this uh, uh, image that has been seen is called as the map of consciousness and as per this map of consciousness what he talks about is we are constantly vibrating based on the emotions that we are experiencing at any given point of time now can you look at this particular graph and tell me what is the frequency of shame what is the frequency of shame go ahead and type that in the chat box and let me know what is the frequency of shame wonderful great many of you have noticed that which is 20 what is the frequency of guilt 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 what is the frequency of guilt very nice thank you so much if you have to be uh, vibrating with love what is the frequency if you have to vibrate at love what is the frequency very nice thank you so much 
if you are experiencing anger <laughs> what is your frequency what is the frequency if you are experiencing anger wonderful great awesome so let me quickly take you through this right all the way till 175 pride we are vibrating at a lower frequency all the way till pride is a lower frequency whenever you're going through these particular emotions you are vibrating at a lower frequency which is not right courage is the breaking point which is 200 and from there onwards you start vibrating at a better frequency you go all the way to neutrality willingness acceptance reason etc and love is the higher frequency then you can go all the way till enlightenment right you can write uh, uh, read the book letting go right letting go is a beautiful book and he talks about this there is a book on only a map of consciousness you know, follow dr richard and his re, uh, research and study now if you look at the uh, frequency chart which is there now the center point the center point of the center point of uh, um, the lower emotions is fear which is at 100 and the center point for the higher emotions which is 500 which is love right so in a short way if you have to put it any work that you do you can do it from a space of fear or you can do it from a space of love can you all type the word fear and love in the chat box type fear and love fear and love fear and love fear and love in the chat box go ahead and type that in the chat box please type fear and love fear and love any task that you do in your life any task you can either do it from a space of fear which is the center point of lower emotions or you can do it from a space of love i'm eating my food in the morning i'm getting late for my webinar i'm doing it from a space of oh my god am i getting late am i getting uh, will what will happen will i miss something now that is a space of fear i'm connected to the food and i'm enjoying the food and i'm having it that is a space of love i'm handling a patient what will i do the job properly or not what will happen to the patient will i be able to give them the best treatment or not will i be able to give them the best service or not if i am operating from that space then i'm operating out of fear or i will do the best i can that is operating from a space of love smiling at them right now putting out the right intentions accepting whatever the other person is doing in front of you the other person is shouting at you the other person is angry at you just looking at them and accepting what they're going with them and sending them back love it's operating from a space of love right now all of this through awareness one the first step and through practice it becomes very possible for us so like i pointed out any single task in your life you can either do it from a space of fear or you can do it from a space of love the more you start doing things from a space of love not because of conditions not because i have to do it i have no other choice then you will have misery you will go through suffering look at the center and right? you will go through suffering in your life whenever you are doing tasks out of a space of fear you will not enjoy life you will not enjoy the moment you will not enjoy the experience that you're going through right now entire college period your entire online experience could be something which is from a state of suffering or you can move forward to a space of getting by now when you go to a space of love and above you are in a state of flow you will start enjoying now for me training is like that i quit my corporate career to get into this training space and every single day the work that i do i do it from a space of love when it comes to online i i was one of the person who hated online i said online emotions emotional intelligence how can i train it online but i've completely shifted online all my trainings are happening online i'm training online has given me the opportunity to connect with more number of people i train people abroad i train and people from all uh, uh, cities from uh, india because of this online experience when i shifted into a space of love more and more opportunities happened during just this COVID period itself i would have trained minimum about 5000 plus people on online I've done batches of 2,000 plus people, 2,000 people in one batch. Why? Because of doing it from a space of love, I attracted more and more opportunities. 
can you all type in the chat box law of attraction go ahead and type law of attraction go ahead, go ahead and type law of attraction why is it important for us to understand this law of attraction at this point of time go ahead and type law of attraction in the chat box i'll give you the connect between law of attraction and this what is the law of attraction can you let me know in the chat box What is the connection? What is law of attraction according to you? Can you tell me in the chat box? What is law of attraction according to you? Go ahead and participate and let me know what is law of attraction according to you. When you are going through a particular thought, yeah, manifestation, wonderful. We attract things in our life, absolutely. You attract what you wish, absolutely. Things which we love. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all of you sharing that, right? So what you think, what you feel, what you send out as a intention or a thought is what you attract back in their life. Now here, we talked about map of consciousness. We're talking about frequencies. You're talking about what you are going through. If you are operating out of a space of fear, you attract situations which cause more fear and more anger, more everything into your life. If you are operating from a space of love and you end up attracting that into your life. How many of you are able to connect to that type? Connect in the chat box. Depending on what is the vibration you are at, if you are operating from a space of fear, you attract situations or scenarios or people who will put you into that fear more and more and more and more. If you are operating from a space of love, you attract situations and scenarios which will give more and more love to your life. Now understand this. This again, if you understand, if you put it into your life, you will change the way you live your life. Now instead of complaining about what other people did to you, what other situ situations did to you, instead of complaining that this experience made me to do this right instead of putting in the power to something else i want to take the power back into your life and then understand this if you change your frequency if you change your emotions if you change yourself into a space of love then you will be able to attract and put that into your life but as long as you're complaining as long as you are finding fault as long as you're in a state of fear and apathy and grave that is what you will attract more and more and more into your life so it's so very important for you to become conscious of what is the frequency that you're attracting what is that you want in your life and by becoming conscious of it you can change the way you live your life right so look at this it is not can you all type that in the chat box for me? Event is not equal to outcome. E is not equal to outcome. Many of us think that event is equal to outcome. Event is not equal to the outcome. Event plus the reaction or the response is equal to the outcome. The event plus your reaction or your response is equal to the outcome. So instead of complaining what happened on the outside, if you start focusing on your life, on what is that you are doing, what is that you are doing how you are re reacting how you are responding and if you bring that focus back into that the rest of your life will be very very powerful so i would end up saying this into our life and i want to uh, quickly take this particular concept no matter what happens in your life no matter what happens in your life when you start loving yourself and when you start approving yourself then the way you live your life will change forever. As long as you're looking for love always on the outside, somebody else has to give me love. Yes, it is important. I'm not saying no. But the moment you acknowledge the love that you can give to yourself and stop looking for approval from others, stop looking at approval from your clients, stop looking at approval from your father and mother, start looking at approval from your siblings, start looking at approval from um the external world and only validate that as important 
and ignore your self approval then you will always struggle in life but the moment you change that and you start acknowledging yourself you start approving yourself and you start loving yourself no matter who you are where you are right now at this point of time in your life then the way you will live your life will completely change so take power back into your life take control back into your life start loving yourself no matter who you are where you are and whatever mistakes you have done leave guilt out of your life and start loving and approving yourself and by doing that you will be in complete control of situations of people of scenarios and you will start cherishing life you will start enjoying life you will start celebrating life now all this external medium and social media and everything has got us into a space where we are depending on the external world if they don't put a like in my chat box i am i am useless if we don't if they don't see my video then i am not great if the other person says they don't love me then i am not good right instead of allowing other things to control your life take power back into your life and start enjoying life right and all of you who have been through this session all this while right i wanted to take your hand like this take your hand like this and then put it on your shoulders and say good job done all of you who have been typing this messages right say to yourself good job done you have showed up you have given your best and that's all that matters when you start loving and approving yourself then you know what the beauty is people on the outside will also start approving you people on the outside will also start loving you people on the outside will start acknowledging you so you start doing it first you start acknowledging yourself first you start loving yourself first no matter where you are and things will shift right so thank you so much for listening i am going to open up for questions we have 15 minutes i'll open up for questions you can type in your question before that let me quickly talk about this uh, this is my book the power of emotions close to about 5000 plus copies have sold already it's available in amazon uh, go ahead and like that and then um, buy that book it will change the uh, way you handle your emotions and feel free to follow me on social media i'm there available on uh, facebook to clubhouse right if you have not tried clubhouse clubhouse is the most happening thing definitely do that we have a channel there and uh, there are a lot of inspiring quotes that i put up on my social media all there are about 150 plus quotes i think i would have written a uh, very very powerful ones uh, life changing ones connect to that there are videos there are free sessions that i do online a lot of free sessions i every sunday i go on clubhouse and i talk and there is a session called talk emotions with ganesh every sunday on clubhouse i do a session where you can come and you can ask any question on emotions any questions on relationship and i answer those questions on sunday in clubhouse right and you can follow me there as well so this is what i have and now it's time for questions we can do questions in two ways uh, um, ma'am we can open up uh, the mic for them and allow them to ask yes. their question sure sir Yes. So anybody has a question? Now is the time for you to do that. I think probably you can do a hand raise, and then ma'am will uh, ask that question. You can see many of you have seven or eight of you are there. Wonderful. Go ahead and do a hand raise symbol. If you've done a hand raise, which means that you have a question, uh, you can ask a question. Or if you have something to share as well, uh, we definitely use this moment to share. how's your experience what, what did you like what did you enjoy that's also something that we can do quickly go ahead and ask your questions yes ma'am you can open up the person over me bhavani please ask you can ask okay so as we wait for uh, bhavani i will take up a question from rithika in the chat box so how to overcome fear uh, rithika there are two things uh, to do that one is becoming conscious and aware of your fear right whatever is causing fear there's a trigger outside right some trigger happens external event or experience happens and then there is a fear inside of you right so now we talked about the four level of awareness go to that space where you are conscious that you are in a space of fear number one number two what look at what is that which is causing me fear for you is it uh, uh, no you looking for their love if i do this will they love me or not is that causing fear 
or if I do this, it will become a mistake and uh, I will not get the outcome that is causing fear. Notice what is the trigger for you, right? By observing what is causing fear inside of you, itself 50% of the work is done. Secondly, take help, right? If, uh, if, if say, let's say I am not able to do my work properly, therefore I'm getting into a space of fear. I'm not able to complete on time, therefore it is causing fear then take help. Look at someone who's an expert in that particular space of getting the job done or someone who is good at, you know, let's say if talking for me is a fear, go to an expert, uh, take help from them. And by doing that, you can come out of fear. So do we have Bhavani ma'am? Is she ready? Darthi, you can ask. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, yes. My question to you is like um, we often get a lot of negative thoughts, right, in our mind, even though that is not what we want. So yes. like, there, there are like multiple voices inside our mind of ourselves. One, we have our inner voice, which is mostly uh, which tells us what's true and right, the inner consciousness. But my question is like. There are a lot of uh, provoking thoughts that come from endless places. So how do you mm -hmm. control negative thoughts? Sir? How do you uh, get rid of them? Wonderful. The first one is uh, to bring awareness of them, right? In, in your case, you're uh, talking about consciousness. So I believe that you're working on your consciousness and awareness to look at the thoughts which is coming, right? Now, uh, the most important ones are the ones which is repeating. Over a period of time, repeatedly, there are certain thoughts which keeps coming back and pulls you down. Right. So now, first is to bring awareness to the thoughts which is pulling you down. Secondly, is look at again, like how I talked about fear. Where is this coming from? Am I the one who is bringing this, or it is coming from an external world? Sometimes it is our mother which keeps repeating, our father repeats saying, or it could be an external environment. Someone is telling you that, and then you go into that space of doubting yourself, right, and it becomes a negative pattern. Or people don't do it to you; you do it to yourself. You constantly doubting yourself. You are thinking, maybe I'm not capable, I'm not worthy, etc. Right? So the point here is to stop. The key word here is stop. When your mind puts that and says, I am not good enough, say stop to your mind. And then say, what next? Right? And all those people who are listening, go ahead and type that in the chat box. Stop and what next? Stop and what next? By doing that, what do you do? You are stopping your mind from going into the pattern of constant, going into that rhythm of, again, constantly saying, no, I'm not good and I'm not capable. And then it goes into a spiral and then go down and down and down. So stop and what next? And the next one I told you already in the beginning of this particular uh, session is to do a break state, right? So you do a physical movement, you do a drinking of water, you do any of those activities by shifting yourself, to breaking away from that uh, pattern of going into a negative one. Don't sit in the same place, right? Don't keep listening to the same songs. We have a playlist of songs. And you just listen to the playlist again. You go after listening to the playlist, you automatically go into a negative spirit, right? So be conscious of the songs that you're listening to. By doing all these activities, we can shift, right? So consciousness is the way to come out of negative patterns. Bring awareness to where it is coming, external or internal. If it is external, see how we can change that. If it is internal, uh, break state after that, and then consciously choose a action or a process which will get you out of that. So Thank you so Ranjit. much. Ranjit. Thank Ranjit. you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm a faculty here. I have a question, sir. Um, yes. I handle uh, the uh, paper on uh, resourcing uh, healthcare professionals. Uh, we call it talent management in health. And I specifically started on the topic of uh, emotional intelligence in healthcare professionals. Uh, I was discussing it with my students. So um, as a part of our emotional uh, uh, set, we are all uh, uh, predisposed to some amount of neuroticism by default, by birth. So yeah. as much as we understand that it is okay not to be the ideal person for everyone, the current environment that we live in, uh, whether it is office or our social circles, uh, it, it, it is demanding us to be the ideal or good guy for everyone. So it yeah. adds to uh, the emotional pressure and instability and it impacts the neurotic, it causes a lot of uh, neurotic impact on us. 
So sure. how do we handle this? My students are uh, uh, going to be future managers and your answer can help us uh, better. Surely, ma'am. So the answer is, uh, instead of trying to be good to everyone, first try to be good to ourselves. Now, <laughs> this might look a little <clears throat> on the other side, but uh, I always say this, when your cup is empty, you can't fill others' cup. When right. my cup is empty, how, how do I have the ability to go and fill? No, but that is what everybody is trying to do. When their love is empty, they're trying to go and give love to everybody else. Now, I'm not saying you should not give love to others, but I'm saying fill yourself first. Take care of yourself first. Fill yourself with love. So how do I love myself? By doing the things which brings happiness for me. Right? For example, for me, reading a book could bring me happiness. Or meditating could bring me happiness. Watching a movie could bring me happiness. Having that food from my favorite shop could give me happiness. Or spending time with the people I love could give me happiness. Right? Or just sitting by myself and not doing anything could give me happiness. For me, doing training program gives me a lot of happiness. So first is to find things which gives you a lot of happiness gives you a lot of satisfaction, fulfillment, right? By doing those particular tasks, which you really love, is fills your cup first. And when your cup is full, by default, you will start helping people. By default, you will start giving love to others. But we are always working on the reverse. We are thinking that love will come from outside and we try to do good things which will get an approval from somebody else. If I do this, my teacher will say I'm doing a good job. If I do this, my boss will appreciate me. If I do this, my parents will say I'm I'm doing I'm a great uh, son or daughter. Now, if you try to please others, and if you're constantly looking at approval from others, then this is the pain that we'll go through in our life. But by taking care of ourselves first and filling our cup first, then our ability to do good for others tremendously improves. So the short answer, ma'am. Uh, again, there's a lot of answer that I can give you. A lot more depth we can go to. But given the short frame of time, this is the answer for, is to love yourself first. Make yourself as the priority by taking care of yourself. Then when you're fully energized, fully activated, then you are in the right emotional state. Then your ability to help everybody else becomes very powerful. Till the time you. you are looking, you're seeking approval from others, we will be in that pain that we are talking. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I, I have a I am a faculty from uh, SRFMS. I have a yes. question for you. See, I yes. have the relative who is actually uh, emotionally very much affected because of various reasons. And because of? Various uh, personal reasons. And okay. the uh, circumstances. And I am trying to help him come out of that pressure and be normal or come back to normalcy. Sometimes to give him more confidence, I actually talk good things, uh, tell some uh, examples from outside and uh, keep praying. Uh, divert yourself. Your mind. Whenever you get that thought, you immediately push that thought out and start thinking something good. Some yeah. good times which you have spent in your life. So I am uh, in in this uh, situation. I am blamed as your talking philosophy that doesn't work in my case. I don't accept all that you say. It's, it may be it may work for somebody else. You say keep praying. Uh, the prayers are not answered for me. Yeah. This is the mindset he has. So, so who are we talking about? How should to I person? approach this situation to bring him to normal? Yeah. Who is the person you are talking about, ma'am? He is one of my relatives. Relative. Okay. Got it, ma'am. Now, uh, ma'am, uh, understand this. Until that person wants to work on himself or herself, we can't really make a change. Now, when you are ready, then whatever tools and techniques I teach you, you will be willing to practice that. But when you are not ready, then I don't have the ability to change. I have no ability. To, we had 300 plus people, 330 plus people attending the session. I have no ability to change any one of them until and unless the person chooses to change themselves. Now, then what should I do? Should I just wait and watch uh, that person going through all the struggle? One thing that I can do is change the environment. What is the environment? Whatever the person is uh, having around them, because the environment have a huge influence on the person, right? 
So if you change the environment, there is a possibility that the person will change. But until and unless the person chooses to change, I can't do anything around it. So what we can do is provide an environment. So for what are we doing for students? Students, we provide an environment. We provide a space. We provide a space which is uh, you know, a, a good space to sit, uh, proper air condition so that they get what they want. We're giving them an environment. We're giving them books. We're giving them internet. We, uh, so we're giving them resources. We're giving them faculties. So all of this is what I'm giving them an environment which is supporting them to study. Whether they study or not, it is not in my, uh, it's not in my control. The same way for this particular person, what I uh, ask you to do is to choose you to do is to see how we can create a proper environment for that person which will support them to change. Con be conscious of it and live, be happy with that. Don't get into a space of worry. Now, what I see is you have gotten to that space and you are getting controlled by that. You are uh, going into a downward spiral because the other person is not shifting or changing. You have no control over it. But you can consciously create a space for that person by which that particular person can shift his or her life. Right, ma'am? So focus on building a right environment for that particular person. So try that, ma'am, and let us know. Right, And many of you here, I can see that many of you have asked questions and we are getting close. 12.30 was the time that was given to me. Uh, uh, please feel free to connect with me on the social media platforms. There are a lot of videos which will answer your questions. There are a lot of quotes that will answer your questions. On Clubhouse, I am there on Sundays. Uh, connect with me on Clubhouse. I will answer questions for you there as well. Right? And uh, uh, almost we had 1,078 chats out there. 1,078 chats out there in the last uh, one and a half hour session. And I want to really thank each and every one of you for participating here, uh, for putting out here, so sending out your chat box, um, you know, answering uh, uh, every question, answering every question that I asked um, and being there with me for the last one and a half hours. It means a lot to me. Uh, yes, ma'am, Devrata, ma'am, over to you right now. A few more questions, okay, shall we? I'm okay with ma'am. Yeah, if 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 okay. you're okay, I'm okay because you told me 12 30 is the slot. Ranjit, I'm okay. Roshni, Radhika, anyone please. Radhika Krishna. Uh, sir, this is Roshni. Yeah. I had put put up in the chat box also. I'd like your views on attachment with uh, detachment. Usually, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can say something, like even people with the uh, Whatever you can add on that, sir. Like, yeah. so, uh, so many people think that we, if we detach from things, right, then life will be great and awesome, right? That's not the truth. Uh, if you detach from things, then you will not be able to experience the life that we live. Only, if you want to live a beautiful life, it only comes from attachment. At the same time, when we get too attached with things, then again we get caught up into a cycle and we can't experience life. We get uh, go through a roller coaster of emotions. Right. So, for example, family. we need to attach with family, we need to be attached with our spouse, we need to attach with our children, we need to attach with our parents, then we will be able to understand what they're going through, we will be able to understand their emotions, we will know uh, how we can help them and support them. At the same point of time, we need to detach from them, we need to take care of our things, we need to take care of our emotions, we need to be from a space where we are stronger and powerful so that we can support them and Right. Okay. Can you uh, mute yourself for, for a second till I answer? So both are very important for us. We need to uh, be attached as well. At the same time, we have to learn the power of detaching. Right. Anything on the extreme, you're too detached from life, then you you are just floating through life. You will not be able to have the experience and joy of living this particular life. Right. So that's what we need to learn. So both are important and both has to be practiced. Okay, Ranjit. sir. Thank you. Ranjit, Radhika, Krishna, anyone please unmute and speak. Hello, sir. This is Ranjit, sir. Thank Hello. for uh, constantly participating and chatting. I could see your name. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's my pleasure, sir. It was an interesting session. I feel like uh, time well spent out uh, after attending your session. My doubt, sir, my doubt is that uh, you explained about how to handle a situation or um, 
uh, handle a tough situation for example if i am a short temper person uh, say that i am getting uh, uh, anger within 3 to 5 seconds at that moment how can i uh, overcome that situation sir uh, keeping apart uh, other persons influence o- over me how can i yeah. personally handle that situation sir uh, you said about uh, some techniques uh, such as watering water as well as uh, breathing exercise but uh, at that point of time if i have uh, no water in the sense like uh, uh, how to handle it emotionally but so let's take an example ranjit right now itself right so ask you asking this questions or sometimes some situation someone is shouting at me how do i do it you yeah, yeah. Uh, first place, your consciousness if you're bringing to your emotions then you notice okay someone is saying something somebody is doing something which is causing anger inside of me i can see that anger is going to come out right so that is the first level of awareness now within the 3 seconds you become conscious that uh, this experience has happened to me i'm going to get triggered and anger is going to come out right at that particular moment i can choose to focus more on the person more on what that person is saying and then allow this trigger to come out or i can just bring awareness to myself to my breath right right now can you just uh, quickly do it now you can bring awareness to your breath yeah yeah how yeah. fast and how slow you're breathing the moment you bring awareness to your breath you you can immediately cut from that person and you bring it to yourself right that's one option another one i said okay. there's no go for a brisk walk if, if it is possible right you say hey can I, i think I, i just need a minute right just let me come back to you uh, give me a minute and then you can take a walk from that if you have water you can drink water immediately that will help you to break state all these are break states right we are not uh, completely moving away from that emotion this is a break state technique right now let's take the emotion is cut, uh, after the incident has happened even after two hours you are still struggling struggling with those emotions then there are other techniques that we need to use uh, ranjit we have not got into that 90 minutes is a very short time for me to talk in detail about that but if you break state itself that will help you to come out of the emotions very very strong okay so i do get your point sir thank you thanks a lot yeah we have another one question from sonia yeah we'll take from the chat box also ma'am because many of them have asked questions yeah, yes, they will yes, one person sonia has asked this i feel is a good question emotions often makes a person vulnerable so what is the point of view on that now uh, many people feel that vulnerability is weakness which is what is vulnerability first of all showing your emotions is weakness that's what people think right let me tell you very strongly vulnerability is strength vulnerability is strength having the ability to express your emotions you put out your emotions is strength and if you are happy if you are able to share that you are happy if you are feeling sad expressing that you are sad if you are having fear right expressing and telling people that you have a fear or even it's not about telling other people acknowledging to yourself acknowledging to yourself that i am experiencing fear because of this is biggest strength and by doing that your ability to handle life becomes very very powerful many of us are not going into a space where we want to share it to people right uh, for example my father said something to me and it is causing fear inside of me you have to tell your father that you know what this is causing fear for me and by doing that you will be able to come out of it so vulnerability is strength uh, having the ability to express your emotions is very very powerful but yes you need to choose the right place the right situation right people to show vulnerability you can't be vulnerable with everyone you can't be vulnerable with people who really don't matter to you it's no there's no point in being vulnerable to someone on the road right so choosing the right people choosing the right instance right and being vulnerable is one of the biggest strengths that we can have you can achieve great things in your life just by being vulnerable being your ability to put out your emotions hope that answers your questions okay shall i allow one faculty to ask yes please ma'am ganesh subramanian sir Ganesh sir. Hello. Ganesh Hello. Sir? Are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear yes. me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm an invited guest as this. Thank you very much. I'm Professor Ganesh Subramanian from the Indian Institute of Management. I have yes. uh, a question. Uh, yes. Could you tell us about emotional quotient that's often been talked about? So one. And second, as management uh, faculty and students, we are also concerned about emotional decision making i specialize in a subject called behavioral finance where people make decisions out of emotions Correct. so uh, please enlighten us about 
emotional decision making most of us yeah. tend to make decisions either from the head or the heart more from the heart than from the head which is not a rational decision making but most of us yeah. have this conflict between making decisions between head and the heart which have different outcomes so how do you balance this yes sir so the study of emotional intelligence many a time we think uh, you no know, how do we uh, make ourselves much more stronger in taking decisions is it by using emotions what we really teach people is how do you let go of this emotion having an influence on the decision that is the work of emotional intelligence if you are able to uh, remove emotion yes you acknowledge the emotion you, uh, you and you say okay this particular situation this is the emotions that we are going through you acknowledge the emotion that you are going and you remove it out of the equation so that you are able to take a decision out of your rational that is the work in of emotional intelligence normally how people do they do it from a space of emotions emotions play a very dominant role when whatever decision that you are taking <clears throat> so the more we practice emotional intelligence we talked about it right now uh, sir uh, in the beginning of it i actually talked about how for any experience we go through first comes emotions and then if you give it some time then the rational part of the brain starts kicking in right so that's what we talked about in the beginning part of the session so how would you make up a journey by which you take decisions rationally then first is to acknowledge the emotions that we go through okay whenever i think about this particular project whenever i am thinking about making a decision with respect to finance whenever i am taking a decision with respect to investing i am going through fear i am going through uh, uh, no uh, insecurity etc you acknowledge that and then you move it one step away and then based on the facts and figures that you have you will be able to make a decision sir so that's the way you make a decision um, removing the emotions out of the equation and that will definitely help us to make uh, better decisions thank you very much that was very interesting thank you so much sir thank you for your sir, one last question from students sir final question yes mitra ma'am uh so yes. my question is uh we tend to do things we tend to do things that we are not proud of we do mistakes and then you try to overcome those mistakes realize uh you know that you have done this that, that, that this is wrong and all and then you try to yeah. smile the very next day itself be happy have fun but then whenever you remember the mistake you feel low uh yeah. you remember everything that you've experienced and the whole day or you just uh, you are not proud of yourself for what you did but that might have happened a long back but still yeah. you have this in your mind and how to handle this sir uh that's a very good and a very powerful question uh, thank you so much for asking that so many a times what we are trying to do is something that we have done which we are not okay with something that we are not proud with we are actually ignoring it we are avoiding it and we are displacing it we are not really processing it and letting go of that emotion so let's take i made a mistake right for example it could be anything i'm just going to give an example of me uh, cheating someone right i probably took off some money from someone or for my family and i i I'm, i'm not very proud of that particular incident when i did it in my childhood let's take for example right now as long as you have not accepted that you did this particular process and after acceptance go into a space of saying it's okay ganesh you did that particular process every human being makes some errors in their life and acknowledging what you did and saying being okay with it and then going to the third process of releasing this particular um, emotion out of your life for the rest of your life this will haunt you not only will that incident haunt you what you end up doing if you see in the cone that i talked about you will at keep attracting similar situations in your life similar people who will put you into that situation and the more the emotion will start becoming stronger and stronger and stronger in our life so what we need to do is first bring awareness second is to acknowledge third go into a space of willingness to work on that and then release that process there are a lot of healing techniques which is available out there Uh, do follow my work and you can read a lot of books as well letting go is one book that you can read go into a process of healing yourself and releasing this emotion out of your life so that you can attract more abundance and happiness and beauty back into our lives so uh, all of us deserve a beautiful life and 
that can be experienced by only letting go of the things which we don't want. The more we hold the space inside of us by the things that we don't want, then we don't have space for the things that we really want in our lives. Right? It could be people, it could be experiences, it could be health, all of it. Right? So um, you need to let go of it. Um, and by doing that, you can try. So letting go, there are many techniques. Quick one, if I have to uh, share, it's a technique called Ho Pono Pono meditation. Ho Pono Pono meditation. Browse that on uh, YouTube. Search for that and do that. You will be able to release uh, emotions. Does that Thank answer? You, Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, sir. It did help. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Rocha. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving us pointers to swim through these uh, difficult times and making this session interactive and fun. And on behalf of everyone, and thank you for the insights on self-awareness to lead a beautiful life, sir. Uh, I now request Dr. G. Jabaratina, ma'am, to deliver a vote of thanks. It gives me immense pleasure to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Sri Ramchandra Faculty of Management, sir, Sri Institute of Higher Education Research. I thank the Almighty God for his amazing grace and mercy showed on us during this pandemic time to stay safe and healthy. I express sincere thanks to our Honorable Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Chancellor and Dean of Faculties for the constant support and encouragement for each and every initiative taken by us in the process of academic excellence. My special thanks to Dr. Lata Ravichandran, Associate Dean Education, for gracing this occasion. My heartfelt thanks to the speaker of the webinar, Dr. S. Karish Kumar, promotionist, founder, EQ Universal Learning Solution Private Limiter, for accepting our request to be the resource person. Thank you, sir, for sharing our knowledge, enlightening, valuable thought, and helping us to learn to move our emotions. My sincere thanks to our beloved director, Dr. Casey John, and our beloved professor and vice principal, Dr. Sir. Contribution for hosting this webinar. I express my deep sense of gratitude to all the students, research scholars, alumni, healthcare professionals, faculties, deans, head principals of our constant colleges, students from our colleges for invitation and uh, actively taking part in this webinar. My sincere thanks to my students and my colleagues for the constant support. I thank our communication team for the support. Thank you all. Mind-blowing, so uh, Mr. Ganesh. Yeah, Mind-blowing. Really? really connected well with our students and audience. Yeah. Made Thank all of us spellbound. Yeah. Great. Uh, we'll be in touch, uh, Mr. Ganesh. Surely, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am, for inviting me and having me here. And uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Casey John, hopefully, <laughs> sir, it sent out an intention. I hope. We did some part of it, and I'm really happy with the way uh, all of you had, and all the students had interacted and stayed all the way. Uh, thank you so much. We'll meet again in some other opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. One thank small you. announcement to audience. Uh, dear participants, uh, we will send you the feedback link and participation certificate to a re registered email line. Thank you all. Thank you.